Hello and welcome back to Spiritual Crusade. This is uh, I'm Todd and this is Kevin. Um, we are here talking classic talks. Uh, today we are going to be covering uh, James E. Faust's talk from 1994 uh, titled Five Loaves and Two Fishes. Uh, I personally love James E. Faust. Uh, you know, when I was in the MTC, uh, the MTC experience for me was like half of my mission. So, you know, it was, it was a significant part of my, my whole mission, but uh, he came and visited the MTC and spoke there. So it was pretty cool to, to have a member of the first presidency there. Uh, but I, I enjoy reviewing some of his talks, and, and he's, a, he's a good speaker and uh, keeps things really simple. So I thought it was about time we covered a, a President Faust talk. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, so we'll jump right into it here. Um, you know, five loaves, two fishes. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, there's multiple occasions in the Bible where uh, Jesus is teaching multiple or uh, huge groups of people. Out in the out in the wop wops, not near any anywhere, right? So uh, they've been there long long enough. Everyone's getting hungry. Everyone's gonna have to to, to take off to go eat, and uh, and Jesus wants to keep uh, teaching. So I'll read here. Let me swing this over this direction. So I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, he, this is in John. Uh, John and Mark. They they combine them. It was, quote, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he say, saith unto Philip, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for, he's, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered quickly that there was not enough money to buy bread for the multitude. Then Andrew, Peter's brother, said, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. And when he had taken the five loaves and two, and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Subsequently, their hearts were hardened in that, in that they forgot the divine mission of Jesus, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Uh, and that's uh, a pretty cool miracle you know like uh it's it's something that you know i feel like if we saw we would we would, it'd be tough for us to to look the other way or forget or uh or miss but um i don't know how many miracles do we see in our in these latter days that we just totally blow off and like ah that's that's yeah nothing. when i like this sort of miracle to me right like if somebody said hey we're out of food or we don't have food, I'm going to feed you, uh, right away, I'd be like, well, obviously, they've got something somewhere else, right? Like, so I can see <laughs> yeah. in how skeptical we are in today's society. <laughs> Even if this actual same miracle happened, we'd be like, oh, they ordered pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, where's so, the uh, Uber Eats driver? Or the... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Skip the dishes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, and it... Uh... You know, and I, and I love the analogy, and I love how James E. Faust and, and actually other general authorities at the time uh, relate this to to each and every one of us. This five loaves and two fishes. Mm -hmm. uh, James E. Faust relates a story. He's with uh, Spencer J. Condy, and and they they bump into a, a couple who have been, uh, you know, they both knew, and they were both yep. super active. Uh, Couple spend a lifetime of service, meekly, faithfully, and effectively trying to build up the church in many places in the world. And uh, Elder Condi noted, isn't it remarkable what people with five loaves and two fishes do to build up the kingdom of God? This kind of quiet, devoted service to me is surely a fulfillment of the word of God that the fullness of my gospel might be proclaimed by the weak and simple unto the ends of the earth. Uh, and they, I'm sure they had a much longer conversation about that and how meaningful that that is and and this this couple who just you know went about doing good yep. and and if there's any you know that's like what christ would be doing right like the the christ child video the very end of the video and i can't remember what the scripture is but they share it and it said and he went about doing good and that was yep. christ like this couple just went went about doing what christ would, would be doing if he were here 
No, nothing more, nothing miraculous, but. Well then, so like this whole, this whole miracle, right? So some kid or person has some loaves of bread and some fish. And in their mind, they're not a part of the miracle, right? Because they give it to the master who then makes the miracle. Oh yeah. Right. So like in their mind, they're removed. They just did the bare minimum, right? Like they've not really done anything special, but uh, it's wonderful that our savior can take us doing something that's not very special and make it amazing. Like works miracles with us all the time in little things that we don't realize. Oh yeah. In the context of 5,000 people, you know, five loaves and two fishes might as well be the widow's mite. Yeah. (laughs) It's, it's, it's barely going to feed anybody. Yeah. Uh, but in the hands of the savior, it's, it's, that's where the miracle happens. And that's where, uh, you know, this couple that went serving, you know, they didn't serve anybody. They just went about doing what they can. That's they, right. They, they did not, they didn't serve anybody. They served a lot of people, Yeah. but, but it wasn't the spirit that helped, or it wasn't them that helped those people so much as the spirit that helped the, mm-hmm. the people that they helped. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and they probably affected thousands and, and that's just, the direct contact that they had and there's lots of indirect miracles that would have happened too. Right. Yeah. But, uh, he, he continues on talking a little bit about other, uh, um, minor effort that was put in, uh, with great result. And one of them he uses was Joseph Smith. Yep. Uh, you know, praying, you know, again, it's not the bare minimum because there was, uh, millions of people on the earth that day. I don't know if there was quite billions, but lots of people yep. on the earth. Uh, and and Joseph Smith put in that effort as a humble 14-year-old farm boy uh, yep. to go and ask Heavenly Father which church was true. And uh, and he was in the right place at the right time. He was the right person. He was preordained uh, to the, to that to that role. But um, you know, and how many millions have been have benefited from that prayer? Yeah. And that's not from Joseph Smith. That's from Jesus Christ working yeah. through Joseph Smith. Yeah. From what taking, Joseph Smith had to offer. Yeah. Taking a small, sometimes small, sometimes large act, but whatever it is we're giving, right? And, and making it amazing. Oh, yeah. And later in this talk, he says some people are going to have 10 loaves and 10 fishes. Other yeah. people are going to have two loaves and one fish. Yeah. And it's not about how many we have how many we started out with it's about what we're doing with it mm-hmm. uh, whether or not we're using it in, a, in a, an effective way and he kind of relates it to the parable of the talents in that some people have some some had five talents some had ten or no, five two and one i think it was yep and uh, are we are we working with the with the talents we're given uh to to you know develop more talents to 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 bring um joy to the gospel for others but yeah, to be anyway, better, better. That's it. I like right? that. Yeah. Oh, well, it's great. Well, and it's it's a really interesting thing, right? Because, like I said, is oftentimes we don't think of our offerings as good enough or as anything special. Uh, and sometimes our offerings are as little as uh, sending a message through social media to one of our ministering families, or. Maybe we give a talk that we probably did terrible at or feel that we do terrible at. Whatever that looks like, right? There's so many different things that we offer to to our God or to our religion. And uh, oftentimes we think that it's just nothing. Yeah, it's, I I actually, I I don't know if I shared this before, but I had a, when I was elders quorum president, I had somebody mention about, I was the best elders quorum president they'd ever seen. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, have you read the handbook? I'm doing the bare minimum here. Like, I'm barely keeping my head above water. And, and what it was, was it wasn't that I'm the best elders quorum president. It's that I was engaged. I was, I was trying to you know, meet with people. I was trying to do ministering. I was trying to do all these different things, trying to get people going. And, uh, but, but I, I thought about that ever since. Like, is the bare minimum the are we so used to less yeah. that the bare minimum seems exceptional? 
Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think it was that. I think it was that I was trying and I was putting the effort in and the spirit was there and, and Christ or, or, you know, God was making it meaningful for him and meaningful yeah. for, for members, you know, in the quorum at the time. I, I just thought you probably took him for a burger, but uh, yeah. it was probably right. Yeah. That was the young man. I took the young men for burgers. Oh yeah. That was the young man. Sorry. Uh, it also speaks to how different people af affect and interact. Right. Like uh, so you could do the exact same thing as someone else completely in the same position and still someone else would be affected differently. Right? Like that's just life. Right. Different personalities yeah. and the importance of that classic uh, President Uchtdorf lift where you stand. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just do what you can. And that's uh, that's very much because we all have different talents and we all have different yeah. spheres of influence. And, and I, I was thinking about this today because at work uh, we have, you know, crazy safety uh, protocols, to, you know, all these different layers they call them and they call it Swiss cheese. Gotcha. You lay a, a slice of Swiss cheese here. You put another one on top of it. You put another one on top of it. You have five or six slices of Swiss cheese. Eventually you're not getting through the holes in the Swiss cheese. Yeah. You know, you're going to catch all the little gaps, right? Eventually yeah. that's their hope. Right. Um, and that's almost like, like us as members or us as, as people and trying to do good is Kevin and I might know the same person, yep. but we might have different relationship with that person. Yes, right. We might equally be able to share the gospel with them, but, um, but we might do it in a different way. Yeah. And Kevin might teach a principle that totally, you know, blows them away. And I might you know, do something or they might see another person do something that, 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 that is living that gospel and helps them to really understand it. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's just where, you know, they'd say that, that, that people sometimes need something like 10 um, invitations or 10 experiences with the church before they really get interested. And maybe that's where that kind of falls in the Swiss cheese layers. Um, I don't know. Or, or maybe I'm just rambling. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Swiss cheese parable later. Yeah. I, I'm liking this. <laughs> I got to write that one out. I'll figure it yeah. out. I'll share it with you. You might even call it cheesy. <laughs> it's going to be extra Terrible. cheesy. Extra cheesy. Terrible. But it's it's there for a reason. It's there to help us to, yeah. to, to benefit everyone. Yeah. And if Kevin and I were the same person, we yeah. would probably get a kick out of that. But I don't <laughs> think too many other people would. Yeah. Yeah, our, wives, else, yeah. our wives especially, they wouldn't let us yeah. hang out ever. No, that would be terrible. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it is important, right? Because oftentimes we look at, uh, so like you as specific, right? You're a bishop in your ward. And with that, people are like, oh, that Todd Bruce, right? Like there's something, uh, if he says it, it'll be effective. Or if he does it, it'll be effective. Uh, I'm probably not going to waste my time. <laughs> right? Well, like, Yeah. And that's, again, I come back to, to Lorenzo Snow and his conversion story. And I'm mm -hmm. sure I've shared this one before too, but it wasn't Joseph Smith that converted jo converted no. uh, Lorenzo Snow. Uh, he met Joseph Smith multiple times and Lorenzo Snow was convinced Joseph Smith was just a dynamic speaker and had a way to draw crowds in. It wasn't until he was on a road and met an apostle. I can't remember the apostle's name right now, but it, he was a farmer. He was He was struggled with his speech. But when he bore his testimony, it, it struck Lorenzo Snow in the heart. So it doesn't matter whether you're a bishop yep. or a nursery leader or an apostle. Uh, we all have our roles to fill, and, and, and we need to open our mouths, and we need to be found doing. And that's what this, this lesson is about. We each have different, um, different talents, different, different mm -hmm. uh, amount of loaves and fishes, and, and we just provide them to the Lord and let him do the miracle, right? Yeah. Uh, I love this quote. Hey, sorry, do you have any? any no, uh, that's good. We're good. This quote, I love it. This is like my quote for this whole talk almost. Here we go. Uh, it has been said that this church does not necessarily attract great people, but more often makes ordinary people great. Many nameless people with gifts equal only to five loaves and two small fishes magnify their callings and serve without attention or recognition, feeding literally thousands. Uh, and that just like that couple at the beginning, uh, it doesn't, it didn't quote them, uh, it, but 
they made a significant uh, contribution and, and helped thousands of people. And um, that's what it's about. It's about helping people. You just don't know the impact you're going to have. That's right. You know, uh, you know, Christmas was not too long ago. Uh, it's a wonderful life. You, you know, you don't have to go very far to find that on TV or on, uh, you know, playing somewhere. And, you know, you just don't know the impact you end up having. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's an important thing, right? Cause, uh, we believe that through principle, through the plan of happiness, plan of salvation, that our goal is to become better. And that's the main principle between a lot behind a lot of things that our church has us do. Right. Like it's to become better, to do better, be better. And so, yeah, it's usually just ordinary people that put an attempt and then the, you know, you align your goals with trying to be like Christ and it gets better and it, it's more effective. Yeah. Um, he continues here, but he goes, any man or woman who enjoys the master's touch is like potter's clay in his hands. More important than acquiring fame or fortune is being what God wants us to be. Before we came to this earth, we we may have been fashioned to do some small good in this life that no one else can do. The Lord said to Jeremiah, uh, quote, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. If God has a work for those with many talents, I believe he also has an important work for those of us who have few. And again, comes right back to it. We just got to do what we can do. Yeah. But we got to do it. We got to do the, you know, like do our callings, do our responsibilities, reach out to those yeah. in our sphere of influence, help them to feel of our Savior's love for them. And, uh, and, and do it. Like, yeah. Just, do something right like yeah and I, and that's you know it definitely comes down to is just you've you you're here for a reason you have a purpose uh, everyone does and maybe you want you wish that you were able to be more amazing like uh, Todd Bruce over here and and uh, really engaging and that people would follow you and if if that was the case, you'd put more effort in, but you are who you are. And the Lord just asked you to be who you are. <laughs> like that's, he doesn't want you to be Todd Bruce or Kevin Beamer. Yeah. He wants you to be you. He wants you to be the Unless, best version of yourself, right? You don't yeah. need to be doing what anyone else would do. Do it your way. Yeah. Yeah. Unless of course you are Todd Bruce or Kevin Beamer and then he would want you to be. Then do it the Todd Bruce or Kevin Beamer way. <laughs> And it's going to come in with a lot of band-aids, but hey, that's yeah. what needs to be happening. You know, needs yeah. to happen at the time, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. That's what Jay, my wife and I went for a walk today, and I was telling her, "Oh, you know, these quotes have been on my mind, and these are things I should be doing better." And yeah, and she's like, "Wow, like you know, yeah, a bishop is a lot going on, but like you've done a lot. Yeah, you, you've done plenty, and you're always doing these and that, this and that, and the other." I said, yeah, but that's kind of more administration stuff, not like ministering stuff. It's not, yeah. you know, I, I want to, I need to have the administration stuff squared away, but I also need to be spending time with people and, and helping people and, yeah. and doing that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, we'll get there. We'll, yeah. it, it uh, the, the quote that come to mind was a uh, president Nelson quote saying, if I'm at home comfortable and, you know, sitting on the couch, I'm in the wrong place. I need yeah. to be out serving and helping. And that's something that, that I need to be, you know, kind of focusing on and working on and trying to do better. And, you know, maybe I'll figure it out in, in the next four years before I get released. But uh, yeah. right now it's kind of tough with, with COVID too, but uh, part of it is, is this, and I, this is talking to Jamie, we can come up with all sorts of excuses for why we don't do something or do do, do something. Yeah. But what it really comes back to is whether or not we trust in our, our savior yeah. and whether or not we we're willing to put in the time and the energy. And, uh, and president Faust here, he says uh, one of the main characteristics, the difference between those who um, are willing to contribute their five loaves and two fishes and those who don't is comes back to uh, ego and pride. 
Yeah. Know, do we know better than our Heavenly Father knows better? Yeah. Do we think we can turn this five loaves and two fishes into something better than our Heavenly Father does? Or are we worried about losing our five loaves and two fishes? Yeah. And uh, anyway, so that's something I, I thought we could touch on real quick was, yeah. was, was the, the need to let go of that personal ego and, yeah. and pride. Well, and just pride comes through in so many facets, right? Like, and oftentimes we don't realize that the root is pride, but it just, it's everywhere. And ego, of course, is part of that, right? My ego, blah, blah, blah. And I look and I think of things that I like to do to unwind, right? <laughs> okay, maybe the kids are in bed. Maybe I want to play... Uh, Sometimes I like to play video games, NHL hockey. That's a, a video game I enjoy playing. Uh, I like to read. I love to read. And those are, I love to watch hockey, but those are wonderful things to do, right? But there's a difference between doing that for a significant amount of time and doing that for a short amount of time. But usually what happens is it's like, well, I need to unwind, so I should be able to uh just do absolutely nothing for a couple hours and check out. And at the root of that, that's not a problem, <laughs> right? Like that's not a problem. But if that's what I do Monday through Sunday, every day for a couple hours, I'm just shut her down, blah, blah, blah. I'm not being very, I'm not uh, growing my talents. I'm not pr contributing very much. But the proud uh, adult male in me says, well, I work hard. I do my calling already, wash my hand, right? Like I, don't, I shouldn't have to put in that extra effort. Yeah. <clears throat> I had, uh, um, this, this happened a couple of years ago. Uh, and for a couple of years in a row, this is when I was elder scorn president and in primary and whatnot. But every year, you know, we had a wheelchair ramp, a metal wheelchair ramp. You had to uh, install it manually and it weighed, it was heavy. Like, it was, it was a pain in the neck to move in and put in um, one year. Nobody put it back in. So I wrestled it and I went and put it in place and it was all good. Well, the fall came, it was October, whatever, this wheelchair ramp still there. So I wrestle it out and I go and put it back. And I do this for two or three years that I'm like, nobody else cares about this thing or whatever. Okay, I'll put it in. And then one year I thought, I'm just going to leave it. And I'm just going to see if anyone else cares enough about this thing to move it. Mm -hmm. And it snowed like six, eight inches. The plow came out, smucked that wheelchair ramp, took a huge gouge out of our sidewalk at the church. And, uh, and the wheelchair ramp got tossed in the garbage, never to be seen again. So now we don't have a wheel. The wheelchair ramp is at like the far end, the concrete one that like is a you know, gentle grade. You got to park at the far end of our parking lot to, to get up. But, um, and I was like, well, I guess nobody cared about it. And, and and uh and i got thinking about this not long ago and i thought you know that was something that was well within my circle of i was aware of it nobody yeah. else might have been aware of it but i was yeah whether it was my responsibility or not you know i could have washed my hands i could have just looked the other way and not worried about it but the giant chunk the fact that the things destroyed the giant chunk of concrete that they had to repair you know like again not my fault because it wasn't my responsibility, but it totally is my fault because I was aware of it and I chose to do nothing. Yeah. And how often do we do that in our life? Like you have a friend that nobody else is friends with. Yeah. He doesn't know, he has no other contact uh, with, with the church or with, you know, a saint or, or somebody who can connect him with heaven. And yeah. we are the person, but we talk ourselves out of it because yeah. uh, it's not really our responsibility. Yeah. Oh, the hockey games on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. And, right. Oh, you know, I've been doing this for years and somebody else has turned. Yeah. You know, and then the, the plow comes by and destroys that wheelchair ramp. Yeah. And, uh, and we're left, you know, wheelchair rampless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giant hole in the concrete. But there, there seems to be a parable here too, Todd. <laughs> I know it's, but it's, it's a little thing, right? It's, yeah. It took me five minutes to wrestle that thing out twice a year. And, well, and yeah. And I was aware of it. I was aware it needed to happen. 
Uh, I never contacted anybody. I never reported it to anybody. I just wanted to see if anyone would do anything about it. And nobody did a thing. And we're yeah. anyway. And you were probably so smug about it, right? Like, because I've been there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's funny because uh, the gospel and the church are two different things, right? Like the gospel is based upon principles. The church is how it's administered. Yeah. But the church is based upon being organized. And I think one thing that we lose sight of is we have this big burden of I've got to do everything uh, rather than, oh, I could just send a message to somebody to do that. Like, like, like there's yeah. so many things that uh, we have this all or nothing feel, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like it's oh, yeah. you got to do it all or not anything at all rather than no, just give us your couple fish and your bread and we'll make it work. Yeah, and and really when and and I was told this pretty early on when I was bishop, and they said, you know, the only pe the only people well, how do they say it? The only the people in the celestial kingdom are, are not only bishops. Like allow other people to serve, allow other people to do things because yeah, you know, it'd be pretty lonely if it was only bishops up there. You know? Yeah, and so let people do their callings. And that's I'm something I'm, I'm working on and letting people, like even my counselors, uh, uh, coming up to the, to the new year. I had I had X amount of interviews I had to do. I had all these primary graduations. I had you know, on a priesthood ordinations. I had all these things. And they said, can't we help you with that? <laughs> and I said, I, I, I think it's a bishop's responsibility, but let me check the handbook. And yep. we checked the handbook. And sure enough, I could delegate it to them. And I was happy yep. here. You know, I wanted yep. to hang out with those kids and interview them, but. I just didn't have the time for it at the time, but um, yeah, little, well, and it's, little delegating goes a long way. And it's funny, right? Because we have this idea of being Christ-like and all of us think it's absolutely not possible. We're never going to get there, but we do understand that we're supposed to be Christ-like and Christ was known as the master teacher, not the master doer of everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. But like that's, we lose sight of that is, uh, just as a parent with my kids where you're trying to, okay, you've got this chore, this is your responsibility in the house. And then it get, doesn't get done. And it's like, Oh, I didn't actually teach you how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Well, and that's, that's a natural man state, right? That we uh, assume uh, others know how yeah. to do it, or we, uh, assume we can do it better than others uh, yeah. or we don't have the patience to allow other people to do it their way. Yeah. You know, if we're going to delegate, we have to be, you know, happy with whatever loaves and fishes they offer. Yes. And that's going to be hopefully significant for somebody. Yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully it frees us up to, to do some, something else, not freeze us up so we can go sit on the couch and, yeah. Catch, catch the 12th hour of hockey that day. Yeah. Although that's okay. That's well, <laughs> the 12th, the 12th hour, that's getting a bit long, but well, you get sore from sitting. Let's be honest. You got to stretch. <laughs> you got to stretch for those kinds yeah. of days, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. And, and he carries on. He says that, um, there was, sorry, I lost my spot here, but there, he, he talks about some people have 10 loaves and 15 fishes. And, yep. Uh, or 15 loaves and 10 fishes, sorry, and some have two two and one. It's just yep. what we can do. Uh, that's that's the important thing. Um, and he goes, he, carry, he talks about the church a little bit. He goes, a major reason this church has grown from its humble beginnings to its current strength is the faithfulness and devotion of millions of humble and devoted people who have only five loaves and two small fishes to offer in the service of the master. They have largely surrendered their own interests and in so doing have found the peace of God, which path passeth all understanding. And I wish only to be one of those who experience this supernal inner peace. And that's to me, that's kind of what it's about. I, I, continue to have conversations with people at work who refuse to understand why I would accept a calling to be this busy. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I, what I tell them is I, I said, when you know, you know, like I ask them about their, their spouses yeah, and, and why they married them and you know, what got them to that state. And I said, I, you know, 
I, and I can relate that because I, I'm the same way with my wife, but I said in, in, in the church and in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, I've gotten to a point where I can't deny what I've experienced. I can't deny what I know. And I said, and now when they ask me to do something, it's not Joe Blow from down the street or Joe Smith from Salt Lake. It's the Savior asking me to do this thing. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I can't deny that. And it and the inner peace that I feel in service of God is is what it comes back to for me. And uh, and I yeah. can't deny it. And I, I anyway. And I don't know how many loaves and fishes I got, but I I want to make sure that I'm providing yeah. them all to the Savior, and I'm not holding holding anything back. Yeah. And I they're gonna those fishes and loaves are gonna come in with a lot of band aids on them. Yeah. And they're going to be in rough shape, and some of them are going to be burnt or undercooked or, you know, in in bad shape. But that's just because I'm stubborn and I want to yeah. do things on my own way as well. And yeah. and I'm just continuing to learn and grow as we go. But um, hopefully, I come around enough that that the Savior can do something with the offerings that I've, I'm giving. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's the big thing, right? Like, we're not meant to be. I mean, we're, we're supposed to be anxiously engaged in a good cause, right? Like that's uh, definitely something we should be doing, DNC 58, uh, verse 27. But we're not supposed to be so busy that we don't enjoy life because our main good purpose in life is to enjoy it, right? Like yeah. to become a better person and enjoy life. So as we get ourselves more, you know, prepared, a better grip on planning ourselves out, being more administrative in our lives, we find time <clears throat> and we can find time to still do things. I did some service project for one of my ministering families this past week. They wanted me to split some firewood for them. Uh, so I called up, my dad has a, an electric splitter, right? That you just, oh, yeah. yeah. So I took my mall, went with my dad and I had two hours that day. So we did two hours. A few days later, I had two hours to do. We did two hours. Uh, <clears throat> and that was okay. <laughs> yeah. We're still not done. And we might not get to it for weeks, but that's what we had. They got four hours more of firewood. Yeah. We split a lot of firewood in four hours. Yeah. And if yeah. you would have asked me if I had time to do that that week, I would have said, not a chance. And you know what? It didn't impact anything. My kids were still sleeping. So when I got home, they were still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was holidays <laughs> yeah they ain't getting up yeah so it didn't impact my family life uh it maybe meant that i didn't read or play video games for a couple hours right like very simple thing yeah yeah that's what kept getting to me any this 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 break we had i kept trying to like read i probably read about 10 pages of the one book i'm on and oh, but every time I got reading, there was something else to get up and go do. And the last one it was today. I finished the end of the section that yeah. I was on, at least. But I yeah. started the new section. And then Nate was like, we had a Pac-Man puzzle, 300-piece yeah. Pac-Man puzzle. We yeah. did like, we did it all. He helped for half of it and then got bored and left. <laughs> and, but he was mad that we finished it without him. So we had to like tear it apart and start over again. So I'm hitting, sitting here doing this Pac-Man puzzle with him with the hockey game on. You know, they're trying to listen to it, and but yeah. it's it, uh, you know, that's more spending time with him is more important than than read. You know, I'd love to read. I'd love to, you know, that's to, to yeah. me that's kind of unwinding and yeah, and, and you know, it, it's almost the next best thing to go to the temple uh, for yeah. grounding myself and calib recalibrating my soul. Yeah. Um. Anyway, but it's not more important than time with my kids. Yeah. Or Pac-Man. <laughs> Let's or Pac-Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Well, he shares a story about a, a couple that uh, that that go through a tough experience with their daughter. Their daughter goes missing, uh, and and they find her body later. But in the process of this man or the search for the child, you know, thousands upon thousands of people get engaged. Uh, there's there's people who. Um, you know, through the, the funeral services and through the media circus that ensued, uh, the couples maintained a positive uh, outlook and, and were grateful for the people who served. 
And it was just an opportunity to really do, they did a lot of good despite yeah. this horrible thing that happened yeah. and, and, and how it really impacted thousands of people who, who um, heard this. And uh, that, I couldn't imagine how tough that would be yeah. uh, to have a, have a difficult experience like that. But uh, that's, you know, hopefully we're not asked to do anything that difficult, oh, but oh man, the things that we are asked to do, just we, we got to do them and we can be positive about it. We can be happy about it. We can be excited. Like, you know, do we complain about having to go to church? Do we complain about our, our callings? Do we complain about, you know, the, 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 our responsibilities? Or are we excited about them? Do, do people want to know more because we're excited or because we're complaining all the time? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. what are we really putting on the altar, uh, you know, for, for the Savior? It's, we keep saying yeah. five loaves and two fishes, but it's really ourselves. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, and one thing about this, the story that this talk has, right, uh, Five Loaves and Two Fishes by James E. Faust from April of 1994, uh, this story of this family, and this terrible thing happens to them. Now, God did not make this terrible thing happen at all, but he took this terrible situation and he poured his spirit out and made it better, right? Like, and that's often what happens, uh, just, right? It didn't cause the situation to happen, but he stepped in to help out, which is wonderful. And I'm so grateful that I've not had to do that. But it's still expected that we try to put effort in, right? Because some people in a situation, maybe they've got nothing to do with this. They hear about it in the news and they're like, God, God doesn't exist because this shouldn't have ever happened. And some people say, holy moly, look at how amazing these people are dealing with this. God exists. It's a very interesting, right? It's still, like you said, it's what we have to offer. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> Through our lens of experience and how we respond to it. And yeah. that was actually a conversation we had uh, in church, right? With, at, home, at home church with my boys was that um, the difference between the, they always say that God is either, uh, he can't be both all knowing and all loving. Because yeah. if he was all loving, or not all knowing, sorry, all, all loving and all powerful. Because if he was all loving, then no bad things would happen. Gotcha. And, and I had a long conversation with my boys uh, at church recently saying, that is a very short-minded or near-minded near or closed-minded mm -hmm. viewpoint saying that life is everything. Yeah. Uh, just because hard things happen in life doesn't mean God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean yeah. that there isn't a, a bigger plan out there. And so we, anyway, we had this long conversation. I think that's what people forget. They get really focused on life and that, yes, yeah. how things happen. How can God, how can God exist? Yeah. How can he say he loves us if these hard things happen? Well, yeah. you know, again, we're having that, that nearsighted or short-sighted viewpoint and yeah. need to need to get that eternal perspective. Yes. I find going back to that pride stuff, I oftentimes get entitled to things that I should not have to deal with. Yeah. Right. As a father, as someone at work, as a spouse, as just a person in life where you're like, I shouldn't have to deal with this. <laughs> My, you're seven years old. Why are you in bed tonight again with us? Right. Like just those. We have that in all those things. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's not the proper way to be thinking, but I see how simple it is. I'm experiencing discomfort and I don't think I should be entitled enough to not be discomforted. <laughs> Which is not why we're here even a little bit. No. <laughs> and and really in the long game, in the long, you know, the end game or the long term view, uh, this is a drop in the hat or drop in the bucket, yep. or a, 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 a moment in time. Yep. Um, but yeah, it it's sure matters to us. And yeah, and that's where the natural man we're fighting with ourselves about like my comfort or my happiness or my whatever that's gonna bring me or or something much grander, right? Yeah. Uh, do we really want to hang on to these five loaves and two fishes for keep them for ourselves? Yeah. Or do we want, you know, eternal life? Yeah. And and uh, <clears throat> you know something that 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 will be that will last forever. Or yeah. Uh, what what does he call it? A living bread. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll never hunger again. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's all we have for uh, 
from James E. Faust. It, it, it's a great talk. It's very straightforward yeah. as far as um, just doing what we can do, yeah. um, and 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 you know being realistic with our expectations, but uh, but doing them and and serving and loving and just one step at a time, you know, and 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 doing what we can. And uh, and I'm grateful for it. I love that quote that. Um, Many nameless people with gifts equal only to five loaves and two small fishes magnify their callings and serve without attention or recognition, feeding literally thousands. Uh, if you asked, if you asked anybody to go and spiritually feed thousands, I think that they would be like, uh, not me, but like yeah. literally can you just do it one soul at a time, one person at a time. And you know what? They will then, you know, turn, um, What's the, what's the term? Push it forward or? Yeah, pay it forward kind of thing. Pay it forward. That's the, yeah. they'll pay it forward and it becomes a whole cycle where we end up helping each other, right? Well, and it's interesting, you know, as we've, we're finishing up with this talk, just how we have a desire to spend people, spend time with people that maybe uplift us or make us feel good. Sometimes making us feel good is just someone to talk hockey with. And obviously Todd and I like hockey, so that's an example we would use. Because sometimes it's nice to just, oh, hey, do you see Joe Thornton's going to play on a line with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner to start the year, right? Like that's a, that's enjoyable, right? You can think of that. That's crazy talk. Yeah, uh, but uh, some, but oftentimes without knowing it, we identify people in our life and we say, I like hanging out with that person, and maybe we don't even realize it's because maybe they are complimentary to us. Maybe they tell us that we are amazing at things. Like these simple things that were like, hey, I feel good because I hung out with this person today or I had an interaction. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Like, <clears throat> and that's, you definitely can affect people by being that person that someone's like, oh, yeah, whenever I, you know, visit with Todd for even five, 10 minutes, as if it would ever be that short, but I feel so good about myself, right? Like, <clears throat> I feel uplifted. Yeah. Oh, that's, I, I can relate to that 100%. That's like that fireside, the youth fireside we did at the beginning of this, or summer. Yep. You know, I, I drug, I drug Kevin and, uh, and, and our, our stake young women's president, uh, Summer Wolf. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, and as I did it for the ward, it wasn't a stake thing, but uh, who's going to be positive, uplifting people that are going to be engaging and the kids can really connect with. Yeah. And I, and I thought Kevin and Summer, they're, they're, they're perfect. So I texted him and asked him, you know, I pleaded with them and, and, uh, and I only had to ask once they both were super happy to do it yeah. and, and it went off really well. And, and our, our youth appreciated it and the parents of the youth appreciated it. But, uh, there is something about people who are, are happy and positive and, yeah. and invite, invite joy into your life. And, uh, Kevin, I'm grateful for you because I enjoyed <laughs> these times we have together. <laughs> I appreciate you as well too, Todd. You're a pretty okay. awesome guy. And, uh, and on that end, if anyone has any talks they want us to talk about, uh, you know, shoot us a message or, or make a comment on one of the YouTube or Spiritual Crusade posts, uh, you know, check us out on Spiritual Crusade as well. Uh, both Kevin and I do little things here and there on the yeah. site uh, as we can. Uh, it's totally a volunteer basis, uh, all the writers and the, and the contributors. And, uh, you know, there, there's great things going on there. There's people who are much more talented than Kevin and I. And, uh, and, and, will, and you know, it's just an effort to help everyone to feel the spirit and, and to, to feel connected to heaven and yes. to do better and be better. And uh, it's not uh, a guilt trip, but it's not a, you know, money-making scheme. It's, uh, it's just there to, to, to help invite uh, each and every one of us uh, to come unto Christ. And, uh, and on that note, Craig's pretty awesome too. Hey, eh? hey, eh, Kevin, he's all right. We'll yeah. keep him, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Uh, that's yeah. it for this week. We'll see you soon.